Hey guys, welcome back to the channel this week. I'm Chuck and we are Alley Chuck Adventures. This week we are going to take you to the town of Juliet, Georgia, which was made famous in the movie Fried Green Tomatoes as the town of Whistle Stop. And we're going to take you and show you the Whistle Stop Cafe. And we're also going to check out a plantation near there called the Jarrell Plantation. So if you're new to our channel, we'd appreciate if you'd hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. and we were planning on having our lunch here at the Whistle Stop Cafe. We met some people coming out and they were telling us that the power had gone out and that they were closing down for the day, which was very disappointing. But after checking with the staff inside, they had food already prepared. So we were allowed to buy some food that was left over that they had cooked with cash, eat outside on the picnic table, which was really neat because it was right next to the barbecue smoke pit where Big George made up some really good barbecue in the movie. As they say, the secret was in the sauce. Well, the power was out here at Fried Green Tomatoes, so mm -hmm. can't go in and sit down and eat. But it's okay, because it's beautiful out today. And we got what food they had left cooked. Mm, and it's good. Butter beans, chicken. <laughs> chicken. A little baby napper. Apples. Who was Smokey Lonesome? He was the him? guy that, uh, he was the older man that was in love with Ruth. And, and like, was this his house in the movie? I, I guess like so. I need to go back and watch it again. I know. So I can see the different things. Smokey Lonesome. He wasn't living large. No, he was a homeless man. <laughs> he was homeless. Are you going with us? It's kind of hard to see in the shadows. But this is where Buddy's arm lied, lies. So after having lunch there at the Whistle Stop Cafe, we decided to just check out the little town of Juliet, which was the town of Whistle Stop in the movie Fried Green Tomatoes. I think every gift shop we went to was also dog friendly and said Nikki could come on in. And uh, we picked up a couple of neat little uh, souvenirs while we were there. Definitely got to pick up, a, you know, some souvenirs from uh, the town of Whistle Stop. So I guess maybe the whistle stop is back open and the electricity is now running because I see a lot of cars parked here again. This place must really do the business. And for those of you who have been following us uh, in our channel for quite a while, you know we love, love our history and we definitely had a lot of history here in the little town of Juliet, you know, not only from the movie fried green tomatoes, but just the town of Juliet itself is a uh, really cool little old historic town. And if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that this old fireplace hearth was in the movie where Kathy Bates' character, Evelyn Couch, and Jessica Tandy's character, Ninny Threadgood, were at the end of the movie saying, somebody stole my house, where is my house? So that pretty much wrapped up our first trip to Juliet and the Whistle Stop. We did go back a couple days later because we wanted to eat inside the Whistle Stop and we wanted to check out a couple other things in the town there that we researched. But first we stopped at the Dossett Nature Trail. We're at the Dossett Nature Trail. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Dossett or Dossett mm -hmm. Nature Trail. You're supposed to be able supposed to see to be, wild animals, right? Yeah, you're supposed to be able to see wild animals here. It is not pet friendly, by the way. We had to leave Nikki in the truck. Which I can understand. Yeah. She's not understanding, <laughs> no. that's for sure. She wants out. <laughs> Animal exhibits straight ahead. No pets allowed. They have plenty of signs up saying no pets allowed. So I'm assuming, you know what? There's no pets allowed. <laughs> this is neat. Little covered bridge. I think we're getting ready to check out animal the animal animals. trail. Featuring mammals, birds of prey, native to Georgia. There's the otter. <laughs> hey, buddy. Aww. This looks like a dog. Mm -hmm. There's Allie's favorite up there. I don't know if you can see them. They're 
very, very top. They're up there, screech owls. And how do you pronounce that? Barred owl? Barred owls? So this kind of reminds us of the animal refuge that we were at down near Peace River. This is a nice uh, little free exhibit here. Shame Nikki couldn't come in. She would love it. It's the black bears. definitely a really pretty trail winding through the trees and looking at the animals really neat but I would have to say recently when we were at where was it Peace, Peace River Peace River I felt like the animals there were so much more active than here yeah the bear was way more active yeah I don't know these animals here seem like they just the owl there was out. hooting at me mm -hmm. I was here, just stared at me. The bald eagle was cool, but he looked he wanted like to get he was, out. Yeah, he didn't look happy. Yeah. Kind of made me sad a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. But then, then again, I think he had a broken wing, so they were probably rehabilitating him. Yeah. Well, we're gonna head on over to Juliet, I guess. Mm -hmm. Definitely a pretty park here, and it's free. It's nice. Nice little uh, side side excursion, I would say. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, we are back in Whistle Stop. Actually, we're in Juliet. We're at the Whistle Stop Cafe, and we've been sitting here for what forty minutes at least. Almost close to an hour. Yeah, when you get here and there's a big line they have a sign-in sheet at the front there and it says for every five people ahead of you expect about an hour waits well we had probably 15 people ahead of us so it seems like it's going pretty quick to a certain point i think we're maybe what five people ahead of us now yeah probably and uh we're just gonna wait i mean we're it's here worth it, cause the food is so good well not only that we want to be able to sit inside and, and see the actual inside of the restaurant we didn't get to do that the other day yeah, i didn't even get to go in experience the ambiance of eating inside the restaurant yeah <laughs> we are literally parked right here and every time the lady comes out to call a new name i roll down the window and listen to see if it's ours and when she finally does come out and call our name i'm going to be super happy because when we first got here i wasn't super hungry now i'm super hungry because sitting here with the window down every time i roll the window down i smell the fried chicken cooking in there and i'm like <laughs> so i'm getting hungry yes yeah, so i'm getting hungry too and after that, we're going to go to the United Methodist uh, Church, which played the Baptist Church in the movie, and also the cemetery there. And there's supposed to be two fake gravestones, one for Ruth Jameson and Buddy. I don't know what Buddy's last name was, but Buddy was the guy, the kid killed in, by the train in the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. So we're going to check out that while we're over here, too. Well, it is uh, 3.22. We got here at about 1.30. We've just finished eating, so, you know, we waited a little while, and but once we got in... Well the... worth it. Oh, yeah. I had fried chicken, cream corn, fried okra, a roll, fried green tomatoes. It was amazing, and I got a little bit of take home. <laughs> okay, so how are you liking the barbecue? Secrets in the sauce. I ended up getting the pulled pork and coleslaw and mashed potatoes. At first, I wasn't crazy about the coleslaw, and after a few bites, I was like, this 
really good and might be my favorite coleslaw now. It had a very fresh taste to it. It reminded <laughs> me of when I was a kid going to my grandparents' house and running around outside in the yard on a beautiful spring day. It's honestly that taste, just that fresh yeah. taste. <laughs> the barbecue was great. Uh, my, my only knock would have, I would have liked a little bit more barbecue sauce. It felt a little, not quite. The little cup they gave us probably if i had like a half a cup more it would have been perfect so i don't know if i could ask i probably could ask for an extra cup yeah. uh, even if i'd have paid for it it would have been worth it the, the price of food is not that expensive we ate in there uh she like she had, she had fried chicken two sides i had the pulled pork and two sides and it was 41 dollars and iced tea and their iced tea is amazing here oh yeah sweet uh, tea <laughs> we drank probably four mason jars full so <laughs> We got a short ride back to the campground or a short ride over to the cemetery where we're going to go look for these headstones and we're probably both going to have to pee before we get there so <laughs> <laughs> all right that's what that's the plan now we're going to go try to find the united methodist church and see the faux the fake gravestones of ruth and buddy we are here at the what is it the united, united methodist. methodist but they in the movie it was it actually baptist church yeah so this is the church that was in the movie has a Baptist church and a cemetery next to it here. They have a couple faux gravestones here. And Allie was like, it could take forever to find these graves. And nope. They were right here. Look for the bee, or look for the honey actually. So you got Buddy Threadgood, 1902 to 1920. He was 18 years old in the movie when he died then. And then you got Ruth Jameson, born 1903, died 1939 forever in our hearts and people have been leaving honey and Allie was like why honey and I was like you don't remember the movie uh, I don't remember that yeah I guess that she yeah. was a bee charmer well Itchy was the bee charmer but Ruth would call her the bee charmer oh okay so technically Itchy probably would have leaved the honey for her because mm -hmm. she was her friend gotcha hmm. huh. really neat so right here you see right in here you can see the concrete ledge all the edge yeah that's in the movie the fried green tomato movie where they were walking along the edge with the um, umbrella talking talking about the lake of rose mm -hmm. and, and right there that is the what in the movie uh, it's just a factory in the background yep if we could get over there somehow we would be able to get a better view of the falls yeah, I don't know how we get over there though. I'm not sure either. But we are at the Jarrell Plantation. Yep. And we're, he says it takes about an hour normally, but we got about 45 minutes. So is this just a barn right here on our right? Yep, just a barn. Okay. Chicken house oh, and chickens. well, it was a smokehouse at one point. Chicken house privy up to the chicken. This is the privy, otherwise known as the shitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is an outhouse. It's a three-seater. Can you imagine sitting in there with two of your best friends or family? Oh my god! And taking a dump together. I don't think you want to go in there. Hey, buddy. Oh, my God. They would ram you. ram a lama ding dong Come here. Hi, guys. Come here. Hi. Nikki's wanting to make friends with the goats. Oh, my goodness, Nikki. He's looking at you. Dick Jarrell. Returned to the plantation with his wife, Mary Elizabeth Van Zandt, and bought 12 acres from Dick's mother, Nancy Ann. They built a farmhouse and sawmill on the property in 1895, and their family grew to include 12 children while living in what was meant to be a temporary two-room house. How cool is this? What? I am actually super happy that we decided to go ahead and drive that seven miles more from Whistle Stop to check this out. Mm -hmm. This is really cool. Yeah. 
well worth six dollars a person or whatever it was. 1895 house. Oh, I love that bed. Beds are so cool. So pretty. Now this house is not part of the tour Alley said. It is a Jarrell house, but somebody actually lives there now. So not part of the tour. We have beehives and terraces. So those are beehives right there. And we were just talking about the bee charmer from the movie Fried Green Tomatoes. Nikki thinks she's going in this house, huh? <laughs> How cool it is up on his porch. Those are for making clothes and this is uh, fa all fabric stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is the kitchen of the house. I guess they always kept the kitchens separate, so it wouldn't be a fire, wouldn't burn down the rest of the house. Or probably even heat up the other part of the house. Mm -hmm. Man, look at these saw blades. Well, would you look at the size of that furnace? Oh my gosh. You know what that reminds me of? What? Freddy Krueger. Mm. Nightmare on Elm Street. Ooh, we miss that time of year. That's right. It's Halloween time. What do you think the odds that there are some ghosts roaming around in this area? Mm. I don't know. I'm thinking there probably Probability, probably is. yeah. Very neat. Farm implement shed. Wow. The blacksmith and carpentry, carpentry workshop. Oh, that's neat. Look at all those tools. So the Jarrell Plantation House and all of the surrounding buildings. This is definitely a really cool excursion. Yeah, cool walking tour. So if you're in the area, you need to check it out. It's only about a little over six bucks a person, an adult and definitely worth it. Maybe seven miles from uh, Whistle Stop if you're down there checking that out. And overall from where we're staying in High Falls, maybe 20 minute drive. Definitely worth the, uh, worth the trip over here. Yeah, it's a great little, great little walk around. Woo, we out of shape out. too, ain't we? <laughs> Starting to huff and puff going up this hill. Just a wee bit. <laughs> uh. <laughs> pants are falling down, pants on the ground. Well, we're going to go back and have a little campfire, enjoy our last evening, evening, and be ready to head out tomorrow morning. Ah, boo. Got to go back to work on Tuesday. Boo.